I am um, continuing to weave the copper shapes. Uh, if you haven't joined me before, I'm Evelyn Vanderhoop. Kajuth is my Haida name, and I'm a weaver of the Northwest Coast Chiefs robes. Uh, I do Raven's Tail as well as the uh, Nahim technique. And right now I'm in the middle of um, weaving a Nahim shape. It's shaped and created by Nahim Techniques. And so that's what I'm going to continue to do is um, go across this row of copper shields and uh, weave. So um, uh, my previous video, I had, um, I had read chapter one of my, my book, which will hopefully someday get published. So um, I was thinking I would back up and uh, while I'm weaving, I will narrate the, um, the introduction, the one, the introduction before uh, I did uh, the chapter one. So I think that's what I'm gonna read to you as you watch me weave today. So Hella, thank you for joining me. So I promised uh, to read you the introduction of my someday printed manuscript uh, or published manuscript, but I've changed my mind. I'm sorry. I guess it's a woman's prerogative. So um, I'm going to just read a little bit out of my essay that got published uh, with the book In the Spirit of the Ancestors. Contemporary Northwest Coast Art at the Burke Museum. So um, it's a book that was edited by Robin Wright and Catherine Bunn Marcuse. And I'll just read a little bit of my essay because it's a it's kind of a continuation of the ideas that I wrote about in my chapter one. So um, so here we go. The title of my essay, which happens to be chapter three in this book is called the Nahim, Robe of Sacred Honor. The, the islands, fjords, and mountainous coastline of the Pacific Northwest are host to more than 20 First Nations, speaking distinctly different languages and dialects. Out of the rugged <clears throat> environment, and diverse population emerged a complex, stylistic, and sophisticated art. Undulating, form-line designs wrapped symmetrically around objects as grand as monumental totem poles. And <clears throat> as simple as the elegant soapberry spoon. The design served the ancestors of the coastal nation as an implicit language, unlike the spoken languages that kept secrets from each neighboring tribe. This language of visual art used bold statements to be understood by all, warriors, wanderers, and traders within the broad Northwest Coast range. The language of Pacific Northwest Coast art manifests in the exquisite Nahin textiles. Nahin is the word used by the Haida and Clinket for the formline design chief's robe, now commonly referred to as Chilkat. The designs of Nahin regalia display the identity, prestige, and power of the owner. Woven form lines of black, blue, green, and yellow create symbolic abstract images of clan crest figures. Kinsmen, as well as members of neighboring tribes, are able to distinguish where each person fits within their social hierarchy. Clan membership and social position is stated by design. Woven of the Clinket Haida, women of the Clinket Haida and Simpsian cultures weave the regalia as, dis as dictated by painted pattern boards. Men would paint the boards with images inherited by the chiefs and nobility. 
ancestral privileges gained by interaction with natural phenomena and supernatural beings were recounted in stories and symbolized in crest designs. The Nahin regalia beautifully illustrates these prerogatives. Aprons with designs created from shaman's visions and executed in the weaver's twill twine techniques are thought to be some of the first objects woven in the Nahin style. Power from the spirit helpers was channeled through the shaman while dispelling evil spirits and curing the sick. The shaman was aided by the woven image along with spirit songs and sounds. Women re <coughs> woven regalia could display messages of intention as they did when they were designed for warfare. The wives of Haida warriors would weave war belts out of whale sinew. Figures of human beings were woven into the belts, which represented the spirit of future war captives. The visual language of the arts was intended to extend beyond the comprehension of humans. Its messages were composed also for the natural and supernatural worlds of sky, forest, and sea. Travelers and warriors wearing designs honoring the sky and sea spirits were assured safe and victorious canoe expeditions. Donning a woven pattern honoring the forest and sea beans guaranteed a triumphant hunt. The weavers of the woven regalia held a specialized position within their community. They were transformers, converting raw materials, inner red and yellow cedar bark, mountain goat wool, nettle, fiber, deer hooves, puffin beaks, marten, and sea otter fur into woven objects of communication and spiritual and natural amid spiritual and natural realms. Mountain goat wool was one of the primary fibers that made up Nahin weaving. Mountain goat spirits were shaman helpers. Hunters inherited or earned the right to pursue the elusive mountain goat. In the spring, the coat shed, the goat shed its winter coat and privileged gatherers picked the wool from towering mountain paths. Women from villages close to the mountain ranges produced the thin twisted weft of mountain goat wool. Lis is the word, hide a word for this trade item. Cooperative, cooperative trade was essential for the Nahin weavers of the Pacific Northwest coast. Northern clinkets such as the Chilkat had to trade for the cedar that does not flourish in their region. Mountain goats do not reside on the mountains of Haida Gwaii, so the Haida reed needed to trade for the wool. The copper often used for producing the blue dye was a prestigious trade item as well, and coastal weavers had to trade with people who lived further inland for the wolf lichen that is necessary for the rich yellow hue of Nahin regalia. The warp yarn used for the Nahin weaving is composed of thinly shredded yellow cedar bark strips joined together with the mountain goat wool. These two fibers, cedar and wool, are rolled down the thigh into Z-twisted ply. The inner bark of the yellow cedar adds a stiff core to the warp. This prevents bunching up of the soft goat wool warps when twined with the wefts into circles, U-forms, and ovoids. Only the hands of the weaver work the nahin, woven garment. There is no other tool, no heddle, and no shuttle. The warp is hung from a simple gravity-weighted bar loom. It is up to the weaver's fingers to produce the correct tension and placement of warp and weft yarns. The cedar stiff, stiffened wool aids in attaining the proper tension, but there may have been other reasons that cedar was incorporated into Nahin regalia. In stories set during mythical times, cedar bark woven garments had purifying and restorative powers. Often a legend's hero brought a companion back to life by rubbing him with a cedar bark garment.
The Nahin mantle, with its mystical elements, mountain goat and cedar, was a sacred object of esteem. So thank you very much for joining me with this demonstration and the reading of uh, this essay that I um, have published in this uh, book that got uh, published at the University of Washington. Thank you. Hawa. Goodbye.